Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody's Thanksgiving? Good. Bountiful, I hope. Restful or stressful? Restful. Good. Yeah, mine too. Me too. Very good. Well, great. Glad you're here. Hey, it's Advent. We're at the start of something new, a new church year, so Happy New Year. Um, couple little things. One, um, the hymn that's marked up there is 242 is listed as 408 in your bulletin. It's 242. No problem. It happens. We all had Thanksgiving this week. No worries. It is awake, awake, and greet the new morning, but 242 is the right number. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, also, just uh, if you're into strange, bizarre, church, nerdy trivia, um, when we sing Prepare Ye, or Prepare the Royal Highway, it has a bit of a Palm Sunday vibe. There is an old tradition, I think it's Scandinavian. Um, that is uh, the first Sunday in Advent is the Palm Sunday reading. For, uh, our lectionary now has kind of end times, looking forward, looking back, looking around kind of a thing. Um, but that used to be an old tradition. So you've done it without even knowing it. So that's, that's just how on the ball you are. Uh, also, a couple sh just shout outs. So uh, my friend Joe McGarry is here. So Pastor Joe McGarry. Um, he and I started a little podcast we called Two Ball Pastors in 2015. He's the other ball pastor. You can tell him because he's, he's just an attractive man. So uh, one of my favorite people in the world. So good to see you, Joe. He's off this, this morning. Uh, also want to give a shout out uh, both to Sandy and to uh, another friend of mine, Pastor Brett herzog Bekowski, uh, because Sandy reminded me we're in purple. And uh, I borrowed a stole from a friend of mine um, isn't it lovely though? It's kind of pretty. Uh, I think it's homemade. There's a nice inscription on the inside. Um, but anyway, uh, Brett teaches with me at Notre Dame. His classroom's right across the, the hall from mine. So we, uh, to use another liturgical word, kibitz a lot while we're in between class and stuff. So, uh, so he's kind of with us. And I also wanted to just share this. I got a nice note from Pastor Stephen Wilco this week, and then we texted back and forth. Uh, I understand he was with you one of the weeks I was gone. He had a lovely time, so he, he wants to thank you for being together, and uh, the vibe in the room was uh, energetic and full of hope for the future and that kind of thing, and I just wanted to pass that along because it's nice to hear. So uh, anyway, all about being connected. Anyway, let's start. So we start with the lighting of the Advent wreath. Peggy, that's your cue. <laughs> So I was really proud of this uh, idea I had for a kid sermon today, because I have, we're all, we're big kids. Uh, I have this alarm clock that I have in my office and it's there steadfast no matter what, it always works. Um, but obviously I don't have it plugged in. So I, I got bad scrunch around the house to look for batteries and lo and behold, no dice. Uh, so then I thought, oh, maybe the batteries I found are no good. So then I went and I bought some new batteries and I put the new batteries in, and it beeped like the alarm works, but still, nothing. So I guess in the meantime, it reminds me, you can have great plans. You can be prepared. Uh, but I think what Advent teaches us a lot, I think actually, and one of the things I think it teaches us is you have to be present in the moment because you never know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, I was gonna tell you the story of when uh, my son Joe was like a little guy, like little, like holding your blanket little. He would come into our room in the morning holding his blanket, wanting to play. We had to teach him what a five looked like so he could know what time it was. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, I'd look at the clock and I'd open my eye and there he was standing there ready to play cards. But anyway, uh, Advent, it's about being present in the moment. We're gonna hear more about that. Uh, it's about knowing the time and it's about being aware of our surroundings where Christ meets us. Let's stand for the Holy Gospel. And let's say together, Alleluia! Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia! Our Gospel today comes from Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, But about that day and hour no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would have not left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. <clears throat> kind of an uplifting text, right? So I can remember this plain as day. Yes, Lord. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. That was great. I wish we planned that, actually. That's good. That's really a great setup for the rest of this uh, message. Be present in the moment. Be present in the moment. Uh, so anyway, I remember this. Uh, I think I remember the details of, you know, like when it was and where it was and who was there and what I was wearing and what the day was like and everything. Um, it was exactly. I remember it completely. It's one of those memories that's like fused in my brain forever. Um, it was 10 years ago. Well, maybe maybe it was nine. Maybe it was 12. I, th that doesn't matter. What matters is I remember it specifically, uh, down to the wire, exactly the thing that happened. It was Advent. Uh, it was these readings, I think. I mean, I think it was Advent. I mean, it might have been in the summer. I, I, I kind of remember not wearing uh, my, my robe, which I would have in Advent. So I, I don't know. Maybe it, but that doesn't matter. I remember it specifically... The exact way it happened, uh, it was Advent or maybe it was spring or summer or fall. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, there were these two girls sitting in the front row. This was in the church in New Canaan, uh, St. Michael's, where I served as pastor for a while. Uh, these two were best friends. They sat together normally, but for whatever reason, they decided, you know, in the back someplace, they decided today was the day they were going to sit right in the front row. They were so excited to be there. Maybe they were going to light the Advent wreath or... Maybe it was something else. I don't really remember. But it's okay. I remember the, the parts that matter. Uh, because that's what it's all about. is being present in the moment for the parts that matter. Uh, these two are sitting right there. And I had this refrain in my sermon. Not too different than the one I have today about remembering things specifically. And saying it a few times over and over. And being disproven that that was actually true. But uh, I kept saying throughout the sermon, uh, what time is it? And I meant it rhetorically, like, you know, like, let's pay attention to what's going on in the world, and let's do the things we're supposed to do as a congregation, and let's be present in our own lives to, to what's going on and where God is meeting us. But every time I said, what time is it? They shouted out, Pastor, it's 10 o'clock. Pastor, it's, it's, it's 10 after, or it's 5 after 10. There was a clock in the back of the church. I said when I came to that place, one of my predecessors must have been really long-winded. Uh, but anyway, it was there. And every time I asked that question, what time is it? Uh, they gave me an exact time. And it didn't take too long uh, in that morning together uh, to realize that what I was saying really didn't matter all that much anymore because they were the stars of the show. Because every time I mentioned it, they gave me an exact precise time down to the minute uh, where it was we were, which was actually a pretty great message uh, because it's all about being present in the here and now with each other and in the world and in our lives and where Christ comes. That's what Advent is about. It's, it's about God meeting us here in the midst of, of all of it. Now, if you were to just kind of glance at each of these readings today, I'm sure you didn't maybe study up on them as much as I did before today, uh, but just a, a casual hearing, you'll notice that a lot of them, uh, actually all four of them, has something to do with time. And it feels like, in a contradictory way, 
I mean, Paul comes right out of the box in his letter to the Romans and says, you know exactly what time it is. And Jesus says, you don't know the day or the hour. Uh, Paul is talking about, well, you know what time it is because you know what it means to follow Jesus and you know the time to do it is now. So let's get to it and, and do the things that we're supposed to do. And actually, Jesus is saying the same thing. Uh, you don't know the day or the hour, so let's do the things that we're being asked to do. Be alert, stay on track, take care of each other, look and pay attention to what's going on in the world because the advent of our God has come. And even our two other readings uh, support this as well. So Isaiah is looking into the future and thinking about that day of the Lord when judgment and righteousness finally come and what's it going to look like? It's going to look like the world is being put back together again. And all of the, the violence and cruelty and war that we participate in is set aside for the acts of, of bringing people together to take care of them. Of turning uh, the war machine into the machines of growing food and taking care of each other. Uh, isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? And the psalm as well, they're talking about going to the house of the Lord, and isn't it great? And yeah, we're here, we got to light the Advent wreath, well not the wreath, but the candle. And uh, we're, we're excited that Christmas is coming, and we just had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and all of that. Uh, but, but think about those words and how they may have been prayed over the centuries, because the house of the Lord that they're referring to is the temple, and the temple, the temple was destroyed a long time ago. And so when you hear these words about going to the house of the Lord, and if you think about Jerusalem, all that's left of the temple is the wailing wall, where you go to pray and, and, and hope, yes, but also to lament uh, what has been lost. And yet all of these things, when you put them together, what are they about? It's, it's about waiting, yes. It's about looking forward, yes, it's about reflecting, yes, but it's also about being present in that moment uh, for the advent of our God to, to come. To come. Look at the images that Jesus uses in the gospel. He talks about Noah and the ark. I mean, my mother has, I don't know, a million different things of Noah in her house. Uh, it, you name it, she's got it. It's, you know, figurines, uh, things you hang on the wall, pictures that uh, are on tables, uh, crocheted things, plasticky things, you name it, she's got it all. It's always about the promise at the end and the rainbow and how great God is, uh, which is wonderful. But think of the horror of what the story actually is, all the pain and destruction that comes into the world. And yet it is a story of salvation because it is a story of those who are paying attention and doing what God is asking them to do, and drowning out all the other noise of the people around them that are either complaining about them or being nasty to each other or participating in the evil of this world. We've got a couple of images of, of people working and one is gone. Uh, what is that about? I mean, maybe it is about uh, getting snatched up and taken uh, in, into uh, the promises of God, but maybe it's also about being diligent and working on what we're supposed to do of taking care of each other, of, of caring for this world in which we've been given, of, of thinking about the things that matter. And instead of putting them off or just lamenting they're not the same as they used to be or wondering if they'll be around in the future, it's about being present in that moment. Just like if you were, were waiting in the middle of the night uh, for the evil one to come, wouldn't you be wide awake uh, and watching out your door? Maybe a little bit afraid, yes, but also diligent, uh, standing on guard, being at attention, uh, knowing that the advent of God has, has come. You look at the world in which we live, and uh, the news is no, no great uh, surprise to us when we see so much horror and, and bloodshed and violence and death and destruction <clears throat> between you know the kids killed on a college campus in Idaho and uh, a nightclub shot up uh, in uh, Colorado Springs and a Walmart put to bits uh, down in the south in Chesapeake. And even in, uh, I don't know the whole story, I couldn't find any more details, but in Hingham, Mass, there was a, a SUV that ran, ran right into an AT&T store and a whole bunch of people got hurt and, and a couple died. And these are just the stories that are on the front page. Think of all the things that are on the, in the background of, of where people are, are hurting and dying 
and where the world is just a, a cruel and awful place. And you think to yourself, dear Lord, where are you in the midst of this? Uh, and maybe it's not so much a cry out of, of the absence of God in our world and in our lives as it is a, a crying out uh, by a world that needs a savior. Isn't that what Advent is, is about? It's our crying out. We've had some joy and some laughs already this morning. Uh, to do it joyfully. Uh, to be like those two little girls sitting in the front yard, front, front pew saying, it's, it's now 10 after 10, Pastor. You know what time it is. Uh, but it's being present uh, in the midst of, of all of this, knowing that the advent of our God is, is coming. What that might mean for our lives and what that might mean for each other and what it might mean for the people that are around us. Think about those things. Hold on to those things. Maybe you've uh, started to bring up some Christmas decorations. I don't know if you're one of those people or not. I have. I got my tree with just the lights on, sitting in my living room. It was fun to set it up and wonder what the dog was gonna do with the tree. She, she's investigating it daily, wondering what this is all about. Um, but it, it's an anticipation of something good that's coming, right? We know what's coming. Uh, we, we, could, we could say that story verbatim, right? We, we know that the angel comes to Mary and to Joseph. Uh, we know they travel from, from Nazareth to Bethlehem. We know the wise men come from afar watching a star. We know that the, the angels sing to the shepherds and everybody gathers around uh, the creche when it's time. Even if the details aren't quite right. Those are two different stories, right? You know this, Matthew and Luke. Uh, but does it matter? It matters about the things that matter when the advent of our God comes. So in these weeks, as we anticipate this great story that's coming, uh, we know where it goes. It's not just about a baby that comes and everything's great, even though it is for a time. Uh, we know that what this ministry of Jesus is about. It's, it's healing the, the brokenhearted, and it's forgiving those with broken hearts. And we, we know it's about him coming into Jerusalem, but being rejected. We know it's about his warm embrace of, of humanity, and yet we, we nail him to a cross. Uh, we know that it's, it's about the new life he gives us, and yet it's always, too, about his suffering and death for you and me and this, this hurting world. So pay attention to it. Know what time it is. It's probably, I don't know, it's a quarter after yet. It's got to probably get close. Uh, they would remind me. Uh, remind each other of exactly what time it is. Have you read, I've always wondered about Advent. It's kind of, it's such a weird story or a weird season because it starts kind of near the end. We don't, we don't start with, let's get ready for the baby Jesus to come. We, we get these kind of texts of the future where he's looking out and, and saying, this is what the kingdom of God will maybe look like when it finally comes into our midst. So, so look for it. Uh, and one of the last stories that Jesus tells in Matthew right before he's arrested and goes to Jerusalem for that week of his passion, is he says, you, you know where to look. You know where I am. Uh, when I'm hungry and you fed me, when I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink, when I was in prison and you visited me, when I was sick and you helped me get better, uh, in all of those places you were with me. And I said, Jesus, what are you talking about? And he says, well, when you do it for those around you, the least of these, you do it for me. This is what the advent of our God is, is all about. So in these weeks that come, pay attention. Look for it. Look for it in your family members and your neighbors and the people you work next to. Uh, Jesus just might be visiting you there. And, and look for it when you're standing in line with people, when you're getting all your stuff, and there's people that are a little cranky around you because they're just trying to figure it all out. Well, look, look for Jesus there. Uh, when you're when you're leaving and there's that guy in the Santa suit ringing his bell and looking looking to help others Look look for Jesus there and of course for all the other places where we continue to help out uh, where people need us most But mostly keep looking forward Because there's more signs to come You'll see a strange man standing down by the river Calling people to the water to repent when you see it
when you take notice of it, when you're living it, you know exactly what time it is, about 10 to 17. It's the advent of our God, and it's here. Sometimes the little ones are the ones that need to remind us most. Amen. Amen.